Hi! I guess all of a sudden my video stopped and now I have to redo it. I guess uh, the universe didn't like what I was saying. So, yeah, hi. It's, yeah, it's Saturday. It's a rainy Saturday here. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks everyone for understanding. Yeah, the, I kind of went into, uh, uh, my reflex sympathetic dystrophy flared up, so I just needed a couple days off. Um, just remember, yeah, I am, I am a psychic, so everything I say on here is for entertainment purposes only. It's, yeah, it's August 5th, 2023. It's about, yeah, I had a complete video filmed when it all of a sudden, bop, poof, gone. And that one I started filming at 10.45 a.m. It's now 11.38 a.m., so let's see if this one goes through. Um... Okay, we know that Donald went in and pled not guilty on Thursday. Well, people start paying attention because uh, JoJo and his collaborators, the DOJ, whenever something is exposed about the wrongdoings of the JoJo family and JoJo's offspring, JJK, is made public within basically 48 hours they go after Donald with something and people are starting to connect the dots and putting together hey if this happens on uh, if something is revealed on Tuesday pertaining to Jojo by Thursday they've got they're going after Donald so it's um, people are waking up to it and um, let's put it this way: Bean Brain is is getting sloppy, it, it's, especially because recently Bean Brain, on his Martha's Vineyard property, you see there's a little private little beach. Barry and Mikey Sotero, because they once resided at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue are entitled now for the rest of their lives to have 24-7 observation by the Pinkerton guys, okay? Now, recently, you see their private chef, his, I guess his name was Tafari Campbell, was found off of their private beach, um, and it seems that he was out paddle boarding but something happened, and he crossed the Rainbow Bridge. Well, you go into this Tafari Campbell's social media, and it says that he was just learning to swim. Now, if someone who can't swim that well, if they're going to go out paddle boarding in basically the backwash of the Atlantic Ocean, they're going to have on like a life jacket why wasn't so they wouldn't cross the rainbow bridge in eight feet of water and since that's an easy access to the back door of Barry and Mikey's summer cottage they've got cameras all over the place why didn't the Pinkerton guys see this happening and race out there no. This guy's body was found floating. This is Chappaquiddick part two. So something's going on and it's this guy knows the guy that covered across the Rainbow Bridge knows too much about Barry and Mikey. And he was probably about to spill the beans on them. So, yeah, Barry's busy, not only covering his own butt, but also making sure that uh, his, uh, he's going after Donald. Every time somebody reveals the nastiness of Bill and Hilly, Billy and Hilly, 
and Jojo and JJK, they go after Donald because Donald spoiled Barry's plans of having Hilly follow him as, replace him as his, the resident at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Now, Donald got in. Donald moved in. Now, by that time, people had found out too much about Hilly. So then they had to pull in his old, Barry's old VP, Jojo. Well, now people are all finding out about all the nastiness that Jojo and his family does. So every time the mass media announces Jojo bad stuff, they go after Donald. And a lot of this is really baloney because one of the judges... Basically, she needs to recuse herself because um, she's heavily involved with the JoJo and JJK business dealings. And you see, she belonged to the law firm that uh, is entangled with JoJo. So it's... Uh, it's going to get real interesting real fast. In, in my opinion, what needs to be done is right now they need a special prost prosecutor to totally investigate the JoJo stuff, especially his ties with the Z guy and the blue and yellow flag country. So they are going to have to pull in somebody who can be nonpartisan. So let's go and get somebody from one of the American territories. Not Puerto Rico, because that's too close. They're too... People in Puerto Rico are too involved within the donkey and elephant groups. But somebody further out, kind of like um, from American Samoa, they really don't have close ties to the donkeys or elephants, so they could be impartial. So, um, yeah, that's where my gut is telling me we may have to pull in a completely impartial special person to do in, who is not affiliated with either group to find out the truth. Okay? Now, there is a lot going on in the Chicago area right now. Uh, first off, um, Nonsense going on at Rachel's alma mater, Northwestern University. Well, you see, Northwestern is getting a lot of grief and a lot of coaches had to quit because there's allegedly these, the student athletes are being hazed and they can't handle it. Well, the kids that are suing the school now for hazing they're, one of them is seven, they're like, they were freshmen, they were like 17-year-old freshmen going in and getting on the teams. And uh, you've got a 17-year-old up against guys that are like maybe 22, 23. But these little ones that are getting, allegedly getting hazed, think back. Between 15, 20 years ago, that's when they started this nonsense of passing out participation trophies to kids. Yeah. Entitled monsters are screaming bloody murder and causing lawsuits because they're not being applauded for just showing up at practice. So, yeah, not good. These idiots, they're going to see what happens to them. Okay, they're little snots. Now, the other stuff that's going on in Illinois right now are big time. It's, like I said, it's rainy, it's sicky already, and it figures. Every year during Lollapalooza, which is a big, monstrous music festival, it pours buckets which turns Grant Park into a giant field of mud. 
it's a mud fest. So, yeah, it wasn't raining when Baboon Johnson went and made his big speech about Billie Eilish what a, and welcoming and opening the festival. But now it's like tonight, I guess it's uh, uh, some electronic music duo and some other band. I'm just like, okay, whatever. I'm not, not going there. I did get a phone call. Yeah. Hey, if you want to come down, uh, you can be in the VIP section for the main stage. And I'm like, I don't think so. I'm not going down there and dealing with that nonsense because those kids are just, they're a bunch of woke idiots. And if I lit a cigarette, they probably go nuclear on me <laughs> where I'm like, dudes, wake up. I'm not going to deal with your little Marxist, Marxist rhetoric. But yeah, Baboon Johnson was there and he was singing the praises of the woke, the woke mob. And uh, he's still pushing his little, Baboon is pushing his agenda of spending money on the, using the schools that are not being used as schools any longer, but he's turning them into housing for the illegal wetbacks. Well, Baboon Johnson gets his power through the Chicago Teachers Union. So instead of making the schools better, he's turning them into illegal wetback dormitories. Rumor now has it that not only has Baboon Johnson uh, ticked off the CPD by denying them the same uh, little thing that he's given to the Chicago Teachers Union. You see, if you're if you work for the Chicago schools, Chicago public schools, you get an automatic 12 weeks of paid parental leave. But you see any other employee of the city of Chicago, and that means the police fire streets and sand, they don't get it. So Baboon is being discriminatory towards anyone who isn't in, it, in his former profession, okay? Which basically means brainwashing children into being good little Marxist socialist lummies. So instead of spending millions of dollars to house these illegal wetbacks, Baboon, why don't you load them up into buses, take them out to O'Hare Field, put them on a chartered jet and fly them back to the country they originated from. I bet that would only take maybe 20% of the money that you're tossing at them. And so that remaining 80% you can put into the pension funds that uh, need the cash flow or actually give the CPD a decent raise. But who am I? Baboon Johnson isn't going to be, is going to be another one, one term wonder. And I would say that the next mayor of Chicago will be a white elephant because they've seen how bad their own kind has destroyed the city. So, who will be the next Bernie Epton? Let's see. Okay, now, uh, something else that's been, it was just a little blurb. But the general that was the representative of the Army, on the chiefs of staff who work in the West Wing has resigned from the position. Basically because the army is extremely upset with politicians sticking their noses into women's health care. Now the A word is the trigger word and everybody's going bonks about it. But the people that are going bonks about it need to read further into the legislation 
because, yeah, the wrong side is focusing on one word, but the legislation pertaining to the A word is a broad coverage of women's health care across the board. They're allowing politicians to decide women's health care and deciding to say what health care women are entitled to. So we need to be careful and we need to contact our congressmen and our senators. And if you hear something, somebody yelling, it's like my upstairs neighbors are having a battle royale. They're screaming. <laughs> she must have tossed him out on his butt again. Now for some international stuff that I'm getting uh, gut feelings on. We know that here in the States and in the UK, we're getting inundated with people from all sorts of countries. Now be careful of uh, people from Bangladesh because right now they've got on the uprise um, dengue fever and the Zika viruses. And those are passed around via mosquito bites. So uh, communities where these um, channel crossers and wetbacks are being housed in, uh, make sure that you are well versed in your tropical diseases because the mosquito bites will travel into the regular population. Just like measles outbreaks, uh, yeah, it's going to, here in the States, we're already getting reports of malaria. Well, dengue fever is the next thing on the list. So people watch out. It's, uh, yeah, make sure you get, if you're in a warm, warmer climate area and you're in an area close to a high density population of the wetbacks, Ask your doctor for the tropical disease trifecta, okay? You'll thank yourself later on. Now, I did pop it into my community page. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks to JoJo and Blinken's <laughs> speedy withdrawal from Afgan Afghanistan, uh, things are getting really bad for women, so... Uh, I put the video up on my uh, ex, formerly Twitter, account, and it's in my community page. So, women, if you can, pe people, if you can watch it, I really, I would really appreciate it because you can see what's actually going on. And this is the nonsense that uh, JoJo and the Z guy support. Okay, so. Um, now, yeah, the Z guy is also crying because there are so many things that are being... Now, the Z guy, you have to realize, he's wiped out our supply of these things that they put into the ground so that if somebody steps on them, it goes boom. Z guy has completely wiped out our supply. And he's saying that the Vlad guys are putting them down when it's actually... The stuff that he got from us. And yeah, the Z guy is making a big deal because right now uh, the Saudis are hosting this little conference. Well, now China has decided to send a representative to this conference that's being held. One commentator says it's happening in Jeddah. The other guy says it's happening in Riyadh. So maybe they're flying into Jeddah and then taking another jet over to Riyadh. Um, the Saudis are basically mediating and trying to knock some sense into, um, the blue and yellow flag country to, uh, knock it off. And what the Z guy is forgetting about is that it's, the Saudis don't like people who really are pushing their basic, um, 
own religious agenda. Yeah. And the Saudis don't like China either. So what comes out of that detente meeting? I'm waiting to see. I'll probably be watching Al Jazeera late tonight to see if they say anything. But yeah, they're trying to uh, knock some sense into the Z guy to knock off his stupidity and just to go back to the comedy club that where he belongs. Okay. The other thing that's kind of um, interesting is that we know that Niger, the military, booted out the, gov the former government. Why? Because the former government was basically helping the wrong people with the main export product of Niger, which is uranium. So the military has control over the country. Well, 70% of the electric electricity that goes into Niger comes from Nigeria. And anybody who's been on the computer, who's had a computer since the 90s, knows about the wonderful emails. Oh, it's like, oh, I'm so-and-so and I need to leave to you my multi-million dollar estate. You know, Nigeria is full of scam artists. Take a look at, uh, what is the 90 Day Fiance or whatever those reality shows are. These black dudes going after um, postmenopausal white women? Come on. Honestly, I think that country is filled with nothing of scam artists, so because Nigeria is upset because they're not getting kickbacks but from the former Niger government, okay, well, we're going to cut off your electricity. Well, you know what? The other countries that are putting pressure on Niger, they're putting heat, saying, bring back the other government. Well, yeah, because they were, that government was giving everybody else kickbacks. And people of Niger are like, no, uh-uh. We got the criminals out. We'll make do. Yes, uh, yeah, they'll make do with the uh, hey, and maybe the kids won't be being exposed to uh, the socialist media because they no longer have their uh, Wi-Fi and can't get onto TikTok, which is run by the communists. So I, in one way, it's a good thing. Um, now, another thing that came out, it's like, yeah, uh, I guess Justin and Sophie Trudeau, Trudeau have announced they're uh, planning on divorcing. Does that leave a door open for Rachel? Who knows? We'll get back to that. Now, some other stuff that's I'm keeping my eye on. I, I told you I'd do some checking. Well, uh, about a month or so ago, Thailand had their general election. Well, let's put it this way. They, Thailand does have a monarchy, but they also have like the equivalent, it, it's like a constitutional monarchy. And right now they still don't have a prime minister because they can't get the person who won the most votes. They're trying to put together a coalition government, but nobody can agree. So um, we'll have to keep our eyes until it might go back to an absolute monarchy. If the, all these people can't get together and cooperate. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a sad state of affairs over there. And, uh, but one good thing, gotta hate that Pakistani former prime, prime minister, Imran Khan. Well, he did get sentenced to three years in prison for the, uh, 
what is it, Tashak Tashakana case, and he's, I guess, he's going to be tossed into uh, a, base, a basic central jail located in, uh, what is it, Rawalpindi. So, okay, so I'm doing my best with these Pakistani pronunciations. Uh, another thing that I'm laughing my butt out because right now, yeah, we're dealing with Lollapalooza here, which is Mudfest, and it's like, well, one thing, well, a lot of Chicago PD are around Grant Park, around the festival, that leaves a lot of other places unprotected. Yeah, the D last night, the, I guess the Christian Dior store got looted. I wonder if it was by... Megan supporters or Rachel pro Rachel people because Rachel didn't get hired by Dior, so her supporters maybe looted a couple stores. Just thinking out loud. Remember, everything's for entertainment purposes only. But another one is another stupid social media clown. I think he's already been arrested for doing this. I guess it's Kai Sinet said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be giving away electronic stuff like PS5s. So everyone get to Union Square in New York City. Well, I guess all these crazy kids gathered in Union Square Park in NYC. And mass chaos broke out. And I mean, it's like arrests. I mean, police officers being injured. Yeah, he's um, a big social media clown, and because he's, his comments online caught, triggered this mob chaos reaction of kids with no brains, he's being charged. So it's, 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 it's kind of, things are starting to bite these little socialist brats in the butt. It's happening. And uh, something that I caught, I don't know if anybody else watched the financial news, but we know, it, they did say, hey, the Bank of England has raised interest rates like a quarter of a percent. And now they're talking, get rid of the uh, Sunak, Rishi, that Rishi idiot, and bringing back Tony Blair. No, there's going to be somebody else to replace that they've got lined up for uh, to get rid of Rishi, even if it means going back, because Rishi hasn't done too well. And it, considering KC3's age and William and Catherine's popularity if they can't get a decent prime minister to run England on a day to day to day basis it wouldn't surprise me if they kind of um, and went back closer to being an absolute monarchy like a uh, back when it was Charles the first but without his ego getting in the way and letting William and Catherine run the kingdom and the Commonwealth because both of them are pretty damn smart very smart and yeah they're going around and they're checking out a lot of stuff so if it goes back to an absolute monarchy, which I think maybe a lot of people are thinking about, a lot of this political shenanigans will end and the country will, country will be put back on an even keel. Okay, um, they have announced... The, yeah, the, the palace has announced just that everybody has been issued their standard summer, their invite up to uh, 
up to Scotland for their summer vacation, summer holiday. Now, okay, Casey three and Camilla were, he inherited his grandmother's house, Burke Hall, on the Balmoral estate. Okay, so he and Camilla stay in that house. When, plus there's a few other houses scattered around. One was built as just a little pay to tear for Queen Victoria that's still maintained. And the castle is maintained. And while the castle was built for Albert and Victoria, and they had nine kids, so of course they've got lots of bedrooms. But, is cram but it is cramped quarters. So Charles and Camilla are going to stay over at Burke Hall. And the rest of the family members, well, they get parked at the main castle. And all the family have been invited to stay for whatever, the, a week, a weekend, two weeks. And that means everyone. I mean, Anne and Tim, Anne's kids and the grandkids. You've got Andrew and Sarah, the girls, their husbands and grandkids. Yeah, you've got Edward and Sophie with their two kids. Plus, you've got the Gloucesters, the Kents, and the Ogilvies. Not to meant, and not to forget the Armstrong Jones, the Snowdens. Yes, David, David, Earl of Earl of Snowden, and Lady Sarah Chatto, her husband and kids. I mean, yeah, those are Charles's first cousins. That's his aunt Margaret's kids. So you've got a solidly good chunk of people, and I have a feeling that is, and plus, you know the invitation was extended to Henry and Rachel but with the uh, caveat that the children must be with them produce those kids yeah you can come to Balmoral Henry Rachel but those two children need to accompany you yeah because you know Charles is going to get as many members of the family there because September 8th is the anniversary of QE2's passing and there will it'll be a quiet day of final mourning with a service at the Kirk that's right outside the gates and the family together and I mean the ex whole extended family the Mount ba Mountain Mount Batten Windsor crew, plus the Kents, the Gloucesters, and the Ogilvies, and the Snowdens. That's the British royal family inner circle. That's that's what you've got. That's what will be up at Mel Balmoral, and you may have a few Bose lions kicked brought in for good measure. Okay. Now, we, uh, yeah, it, it's the stuff, yeah, Henry and Rachel, if they do attend, they have to bring the kids because, you see, if they're going to be using the titles on these children, by doing so, Rachel is now de facto has turned over the guardianship of the children to KC3. It states in the, the letters of patent from what, uh, 19 something or other, 1918, uh, that the king has guardianship over all his titled grandchildren. She put the titles on the kids, so now Charles has guardianship, and she has to produce those children. So, and there are some bills being put in before uh, House of Lords and House of Commons pertaining to titles. And uh, stuff pertaining to Charles is having people do some investigation on uh, what, on the guardianship factor. So the stuff about the kids is going to be, I'd say by Christmas, we're going to know everything about the kids. 
and of course Rachel is screaming bloody murder I mean she's doing as best as she can I mean yeah the other night they went out for dinner for her birthday now she wore this dress that everyone's talked about and I'm wondering okay it's like a mass market designer and instead of the pictures being taken by Backgrid, they were taken by another company. And let's put it this way, it wasn't too flattering. So is this done um, intentional by William Morris Endeavor Agency? It could be. It could be. I mean, after all, it's like I bet she's upset because uh, recently published was the Mail on Sunday's uh, 2023 woke list. I mean, she wasn't on it, but she should be. And according to uh, one commentator, Ollie London, he's cla he's now classifying Rachel as a professional victim. Well, she did do fashion uh, fashion on a live with what she wore. I wonder if uh, that mass market designer's main competition uh, paid some big money to the stylist to have her in that outfit. I mean, anybody who knows anything about fashion, if you're wearing a long dress, the longer the hemline, the higher the heel. I mean, if you're wearing a short little mini dress, okay, yeah, you can get away with like pixie boots or flats a flat sandal, but the longer the gown, the longer the hemline, the higher the heel. You don't go walking around in a strapless body tube and basically flip-flops. Yeah. And uh, my sources told me, yeah, Henry was there for the photo op, and he took a separate car going in and down there direction. So, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. What's left of it, a great Sunday. Um, uh, yeah, I'll have something up for you on Monday, which will be the 7th. We're on odd days for the month of August. So, everybody, have a good afternoon, good rest of your evening, afternoon, whatever. Have a good Sunday, and I'll be seeing you on Monday. Bye bye. Oh yes, and I not to forget, um, mystical fortunes and I have been emailing and communication, and we're try we're still going through our calendars because she has stuff going on this month. And you probably heard, it is her anniversary weekend, and she's got a few other family events, and I've got some family stuff going on. So, when we have an open day, that's when we're going to do it. All righty, and uh, keep your eye out on the Real Music Observer. He put up something that was really interesting this morning. So thank you for watching. Make sure if you can hit that button, check to subscribe, all that nonsense. You click the red boots, tell your friends, come on, let's tell you YT that they can't monkey with the numbers anymore. So thank you. Have, everyone have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.